Welcome to the Daily Business and Finance Show. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer closes two NC facilities, Apple's Scary Fast Max unveiled, Blue Owl's billion-dollar boost from Cowan Healthcare Investments, reached struggle amid broader market challenges despite solid earnings. Stellantis and UAW reach tentative agreement. BlackRock forecasts private debt market to soar to $3.5 trillion by 2028. Sigma Lithium leads in materials sector weekly roundup with Avantor lagging behind post-Q3 results. M&A propels Textainer as top industrial gainer of the week while TransUnion suffers from earnings impact. Kinsale Capital takes a hit while WTW climbs in an earnings-heavy week, financials roundup. Stay tuned after this short ad break for a deeper dive into these headlines and more. Pfizer has plans to shut down two of its facilities located in Raleigh, North Carolina, aiming for cost efficiency. However, their most substantial facilities in Sanford and Rocky Mount are still up and running. The plant in Rocky Mount has recently restarted production following damage caused by a tornado. It is also anticipated that Pfizer's COVID-19 drugs will soon be available on the commercial market. Apple is on the verge of unveiling a novel Mac, equipped with its inaugural M3 3-nanometer processors at the event titled Scary Fast. This development promises an upgrade in power and performance. Despite witnessing a significant drop, nearly 20%, in global personal computing device shipments this year, there's an anticipation of sales bouncing back next year. Apple finds itself amidst intense competition from Qualcomm and NVIDIA's CPUs. The tech giant is scheduled to announce its Q4 results on November 2nd. Analysts are forecasting earnings of $1.39 per share on a revenue totaling $89.31 billion. Blue Owl Capital is on track to purchase roughly $1 billion in funds overseen by Cowan Healthcare Investments. This move is intended to bolster its position in the flourishing healthcare industry. At present, Blue Owl manages assets worth $150 billion, with 14% of its portfolio dedicated to businesses related to healthcare. Despite fulfilling earnings predictions, real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs, persist in their downward trend in line with wider markets due to unstable tech earnings. Major players in the REIT sector such as Medical Properties Trust, American Tower and Vici Properties have increased their guidance following surpassing third-quarter consensus. However, indexes like the FTSE Nariat All Equity REITs and Dow Jones Equity All REIT Total Return Index experienced a drop by 1.49% and 1.45% respectively. Mortgage REITs saw an even larger decrease of 5.11%. This downturn is largely credited to losses within major technology stocks. Stellantis, in conjunction with the United Auto Workers Union, has arrived at a tentative agreement for a four-year contract. This could potentially conclude a strike that was initiated in September. The proposed agreement, which reflects one recently established with Ford, incorporates pay increases of 25% over the duration of the contract and permit strikes in response to plant shutdowns. Subject to approval from its members, this will impact approximately 43,000 workers at Stellantis. BlackRock forecasts that the private debt market will grow almost twofold, reaching $3.5 trillion by 2028. This surge is attributed to high U.S. interest rates, which are driving investors towards assets with floating rates and short durations. Asset management firms like BlackRock are now making private debt available to individual investors a move traditionally limited to institutions. This development coincides with the asset class securing a larger portion of the $13 trillion alternative asset universe. This week witnessed a minor increase of 0.13% in the S&P 500 Materials Index, despite a decline in the broader S&P 500 Stock Market Index due to falling megacap stocks. Copper prices experienced a rally of 2.8%, driven by signs of recovery in China, while iron ore futures saw an approximate rise of 3.9%. Nickel prices took a hit due to global surplus, and gold is on the brink of its largest monthly surge since March 2023. The top performers included Sigma Lithium and FMC Corporation, whereas Avantor and Olin Corporation found themselves among the biggest losers. 
The industrial select sector along with the SPDR S&P 500 Trust ETF experienced losses for two consecutive weeks. In spite of this, five industrial stocks each with a market capitalization exceeding $2 billion saw gains surpassing 8%. These are Textainer Group, FTI Consulting, Comfort Systems USA, RTX and Crane. On the contrary, TransUnion, Chart Industries, Volmont Industries, Grupo Aeroportuario del Centro Norte and Exponent all suffered losses exceeding 15%. Last week saw a decline in financial stocks, with the financial select sector SPDR ETF experiencing a 2.3% drop, which was slightly less than the S&P 500's fall of 2.5%. The most significant loss was led by Kinsale Capital Group, which plummeted by 19.3% due to an underwhelming Q3 revenue report. On the other hand, Willis Towers Watson emerged as the top gainer with an impressive rise of 11.2% thanks to robust Q3 results and effective cost management. As we close another episode of the Daily Business and Finance Show, remember, stay informed, stay smart, and keep investing in your financial future. Farewell. I'm Montgomery Jones. And I'm Amalia Dupre. See you later until tomorrow comes around. This content is sourced from the Seeking Alpha website, so support our podcast by becoming a Seeking Alpha Premium subscriber. See the show notes page for links to sign up. This episode is produced by Classic Studios. Check out our other podcasts in our network at ClassicStudios.com.